Often when we want to learn a programming language, what we do is we learn a specific topic or subject, and then we build out an example that's catered to that topic. However, a more realistic way is to learn a language while we're using it to build something out. So say you're building out a feature and you're like, hey, I need to figure out a way to get input from the user. Then you can look that up, figure out how to do that and kind of just learn it on the job. So in this video, we're going to be doing just that. I'm super excited to announce that we've partnered with JetBrains Academy and we're going to be utilizing their platform. Their platform works by taking on a hands-on approach. So you learn a particular language by building out projects. And I'm a big fan of the platform because I really encourage the learn by doing hands-on approach. So I'm really excited for the video. I hope you guys are too. And yeah, thank you to JetBrains for sponsoring the video. Plus they sent me this shirt, so how could I say no? And if you guys wanna follow along, be sure to use my link and you can get your first month completely free. All right, the first thing we wanna do is head on over to jetbrains.com slash academy. Now, if you don't have an account, you can hit get started and register. I already have one, so I'm gonna click login. The first thing you need to do is select a track. Now a track focuses on a particular language or framework. There are about a dozen of them and they are continuously adding new ones. So you have things like Kotlin, Python. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select Java developer. I'm gonna hit continue. The next thing we need to do is select a project. Now there are some recommended projects, but if you wanna look at all of them, they are categorized by difficulty. So easy, medium, hard, and challenging. For each project, it gives you a description and it gives you the estimated time to completion. For the purposes of keeping this demo short, I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, one of the easy ones. I'm gonna go with Cinema Room Manager. Now it gives you the ratings, a little bit of a description, the learning outcomes, so what you can expect to learn by completing this project. It gives a breakdown of each of the stages. So this one has five stages and it shows the topics that you are going to learn for each stage. And then down here it just gives you some reviews. So we're gonna go ahead and select this project for this specific track. Now, one really cool thing that JetBrains just added to this platform is certificates of completion. So once you finish a track, a certificate gets generated for you. So you have this certificate of completion, it has your name on it, it has the name of the track, and it has the date of completion. So this is something you can use for your resume. You can put it on your LinkedIn profile, and it's just something to strengthen your overall portfolio. All right, so going back to the Cinema Room project, I've already completed it, so it's gonna look a little bit different for you, but basically it's gonna show you the different stages, and for each stage, it's gonna give you a set of prerequisite topics. So these are topics that you have to complete in order to attempt the stage. So let's go to stage one, which since I finished it, it's gonna be in my history. So for each stage, it's gonna give you a description, it's gonna give you an objective and an example. So feel free to pause the video and read the description. For the objective here, what we need to do is basically print a cinema that has seven rows and eight seats. So if we look at the example here, it's going to print out cinema and then down here it has a seven by eight grid. So this is what our code needs to output. Now, the cool thing about this platform is you can either use the browser to solve it or you can open up the stage in an IDE. So for the first stage, we're just gonna go ahead and use the code editor, but if we wanted, we could select the IDE and if you have your IDE open, it'll recognize it and you can go ahead and open it. Now it works with the IDE IntelliJ since that's also developed by JetBrains. So there's a really good integration between the two. So for the first stage here, um, there's also a hint here. So if we wanna click on that, it says you can use system.out for the first two lines. Then after that, you can use for loop. So as we see here, we print out cinema and then we print out one through eight. So the next thing we would have to do is just have a double for loop that loops through and prints out the rest of the grid. So for each row, the first thing we want to print is just the number of the row. All right, then what we want to do is we want to just have a second for loop that prints out the S's for each row. And make sure there's an S after your space, otherwise they're going to be all squished together. Finally, once we print out all the S's, we just need to print out a new line. All right, so once we finish that, we can go ahead and hit run. All right, there we go, correct. Looks like we are done with stage one. Let's go ahead and continue. All right, so that completes the first stage and it was 
pretty trivial, but that's expected this being an easy project and the first stage of that project. But a lot of projects, they start out more on the simple side and they get uh, progressively more complex as you continue. All right, we're on stage two. Now we could go through the description now, but I'm gonna go ahead and open this one in an IDE. So just click solve an IDE. Now, the first time you run this, you're going to see this authorization screen. Just go ahead and hit authorize so the browser can open up the project in IntelliJ. Now, if for some reason the project isn't opening in IntelliJ, make sure you're on the latest version. I was having this issue. I updated to the newest version of IntelliJ and it started working. So as you can see, the project opens in IntelliJ on the particular stage that we're on. Now, if you've never used IntelliJ, I'm just gonna do a quick overview. So on the left here, we have the project structure. In the middle, obviously we have our text editor. Once you run your code, uh, an output window will pop up on the bottom showing your results. And then finally on the right, we have the project specific info. So we have the description, we have the list of topics. So particular subjects or topics that you might need to solve that stage. And then we have the submissions. Successful submissions will be in green, failed submissions will be in red. As you can see, there's a lot of failed submissions here, uh, but let's not talk about that. All right, so the objective for this stage is to now read two positive integer numbers from the inputs, the number of rows and the number of seats in each row. So if the total number of seats in the room is not more than 60, then the price of each ticket is $10. However, in a larger room, the tickets are $10 for the front half of the rows and $8 for the back half. And if the number of rows is odd, then the first half is the lower number of rows. So if we have nine rows, the first four rows, the tickets will be $10 and the back five rows will be $8. So a couple of examples here are you get the number of rows, you get the number of seats in each row, and then you just print out the total income. So the first thing we need to do is prompt the user for some data. So we'll have them enter the number of rows and then enter the number of seats in each row. So if you're new to Java and you're like, you know what, I don't actually know how to get data from the user. Well, normally what you do is you could just Google it, right? But here you could look at the list of topics and see if there's something here that could help. So, you know, we don't need anything about comments, naming variables, oh, scanning the input. That sounds like what we need. So if you click on that, it opens it up in a new browser. So it gives you a little bit of theory on scanning the inputs gives you some code snippets and can uh, get into a little bit more complex stuff like reading multiple lines. Um, and you can even uh, start practicing if you'd like. And this is all stuff that's included in the JetBrains Academy platform. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the code over. So let's go ahead and create our scanner here. And we also need to import the scanner. Now we need to first grab the number of rows. So we'll call it int number of rows equals scanner dot. Now, if we want to grab an integer, we can do next int. All right, let's do the same thing for the number of seats in each row, call it number of seats. And again, we'll get scanner dot next int. So let's get the total number of seats, which is going to be the number of rows times the number of seats in each row. So at this point, we're just going to have an if else. So if the total number of seats is less than 60, so let's create a, another variable here called uh, total income. So if it's less than 60, then total income equals total number of seats times 10. And this should actually be less than or equal to. Otherwise, so we need to figure out how many rows are in the front half. So that would just be the total number of rows divided by two. Now, when you're doing integer division, if there's a decimal point, it'll just truncate that off. So if this is ends up being like a nine, once we divide it by two, it's gonna end up being a four, which is what we need. Now let's get the back half of rows. The back half of rows is just gonna be the total number of rows minus the front half of rows. Now at this point, we just need to calculate the front half and the back half. So it's gonna be the front half of rows times number of seats in each row times 10 plus the back half of rows times number of seats times eight. And then finally, we just need to print out total income and then a dollar sign and then a total income. So let's go ahead and check that. And there we go, it says correct. And we passed all the tests. So we are done with stage two and we can move on to the next stage.
So we're actually gonna skip stage three and jump straight into stage four because I think it's a lot more interesting. So at this point, we're gonna give the user a menu. So we do the same thing first where the user gives us the number of rows and seats in the cinema, but now we give them a few options. So if we go down to the example here, they can either show the seats, buy a ticket or exit the program. So if they select one to show the seats, we simply just print out the cinema like we did in the first stage where S is an empty seat and B is a bought seat. And then we will just continuously show them the uh, menu until they exit. So now if they select two, we give them a option to give a row number and a seat number. And those are the coordinates of the seat that they're going to buy. And then we simply print out ticket price. And yeah, basically this will just continue until the user types in a zero and exits the program. So it seems to me since we are having a continuous menu here, we're gonna wanna use a do while loop, which I get really excited about because we don't get to use them that often. So before we do the do while loop, we want to create the cinema. And I know in the previous stage, we did all our work in the main function, but this generally isn't a good practice. You shouldn't have a lot of functionality in your main method. So we're gonna use a lot of helper methods to delegate that work. So we'll have a method here and we'll call it uh, create cinema. And we'll worry about implementing these methods later on. So let's create a variable for the user input and we'll call it command. Now at this point, we want to do some sort of work while command does not equal zero. So in the do while loop, the first thing that we want to do is just prompt the user for the menu. So we have show the seats, buy a ticket and exit. Then we wanna set our variable command to, now I don't have a scanner, so let's go ahead and create that. So we'll just set it to scanner.nextint. Now at this point, we have to determine what to do based on the user input. So we could do a couple of if else statements here, um, but in this situation, I prefer using a switch statement. I think it's just a little bit cleaner. So in the first case, what we can do is we can have another helper function that prints the cinema. The second case will be another method that takes a ticket. Then finally, when uh, they have case zero, uh, we'll simply break. And then we need a default case here. Um, we'll just print out error wrong command. So at this point, we're actually done with everything in the main method. We just need to implement these three helper methods and uh, we should be done. So one thing I forgot to mention is that since we are now buying tickets from the cinema, we need a way to store that data. Since the cinema is essentially a two-dimensional grid, it would make the most sense to use a two-dimensional array to represent the cinema. So what we could do here is we can make a member called cinema hall and we can use it as a two-dimensional char array. And since we are using the scanner a few times in the methods, I'm gonna move it from the main function and then make it a class member. And we need, also need to make it static. So down here in the create cinema method, we simply prompt the user for the number of rows and seats. And then we would just set cinema hall equal to a new uh, two dimensional array with a number of rows and number of seats. And then at this point, we would just do a double for loop and just set all of the values to S because we're gonna start out with everything being an empty seat. All right, the next method is going to be the print cinema hall method. All right, so initially we're just gonna print out cinema. We're gonna print out a space here. I'm just emulating what's in the example. For the first row, we're just simply looping through and printing out the number of the column. We're then gonna go ahead and print a new line. And then now we just need a double for loop to print the rest of the cinema. So to save time, I just printed it out. And it's basically what we did in the first stage. We print out the number of the row, and then we loop through the cinema hall dot length. And then we're just printing out the value of cinema hall at that particular row and column. And then at the end of each row, we're printing out a new line. And then finally, we need to implement that take ticket method. So again, it's called take ticket. We're gonna prompt the user for a row number. We're gonna set it to seat row. We're gonna prompt the user for a seat number and we'll set that to the variable seat number. Again, this is going by the rule where the front half of tickets is worth $10, the back half is worth $8. So we have to uh, accommodate for that. So first let's get the total number of seats. 
That's basically just going to be the size of the cinema hall array. Let's create a variable called price ticket. So if the total number of seats is less than or equal to 60, the price of a ticket is $10 for all tickets. Otherwise, we need to see how many rows are in the front half. Just going to be cinema hall dot length divided by two. So if the seat row that the user gave us is less than or equal to front half of rows, the price of a ticket is $10. Otherwise, it's $8. So then finally, at the end here, we just need to print out ticket price, dollar sign, and then the price of a ticket. We also need to update the array to now show that that ticket has been purchased. So we would just do cinema hall, and then we would just set seat row, and we want to do minus one, right? Because the arrays always start at zero, so we have to account for that. And then for the column, we do seat number minus one. And we just set that to the character B. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and check. And there we go. It looks like it's correct. Everything has passed. So for the fifth and final stage, we are now giving the user another option in the menu called statistics. When they select statistics, it does things like prints out the total number of tickets purchased, the total income so far, and it does some error handling. So like if a user tries to purchase a ticket that's already been bought, um, it lets them know. We are not gonna do that in this video. I'm gonna leave that for you guys as a challenge. Again, if you wanna use my link down below, you get your first month completely free. So hopefully this video gave you guys an insight and an idea of what it's like to build out a real world application and also kind of learn a language on the fly while you're building it out. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments. Make sure to like the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.